Hello and welcome to hold on. Where's Hannah? Where's where's my, my co-host Hannah to host this standing Stanley Tucci episode? David. David, I'm I'm contacting you from a secure line, but I don't know how long it'll be before they trace this. We we've got to get out of here right, to talk about tell you, the Hannah, Pelican I'm Brief. Recording this. This is a this is a. This oh, is a this is all being no. tapped. I've tapped the Damn zoom. Damn it! Um, my cover's blown. You've right. blown I've, my see, cover, I've been and now for I'm going to get the CIA and the FBI. Um, <laughs> and I've been playing them against each other. See, it's all part of my master yeah. plan to. Uh, I guess dig for oil because that's what bad people yep. do in the 90s. <laughs> and today, I mean, that's what bad people do now. Like, no, I, let's you're be right. Real. Hey, we're talking about the Pelican Brief based on the John Grisham <laughs> novel of the same name, released in 1993, uh, and starring Julia Roberts, Denzel Washington, and the Tooch in the Tooch. In- He's in a somewhat he's similar like right role in there. to uh, what we talked about last time <laughs> on Undercover Blues, where he was a yeah. an incompetent assassin of sorts named Muerte, uh, playing I... a sort of stereotypical <laughs> role for a country that he has no affiliation with. And in this, he's Middle Eastern assassin Kamel. Yeah. It's it's very strange. Um, and he's not from make... a country in the Middle East. He's just I'm Middle Eastern man. I Sorry. guess, yeah. Um, it's it's weird how many similarities there are between two movies that are honestly very different. <laughs> right. Like it's one. It's, it's definitely it's one of those situations bizarre. where it's like. If I had a nickel for every time that, that Stanley Tucci <laughs> was an incompetent assassin in New Orleans, um, I'd, have I'd have two, two nickels, nickels, weirdly enough. <laughs> it's just not a lot of nickels. It's not a lot of money, but it's it's weird that it but happened it's, twice. It's more than you would expect. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is sort of the other side of the like spy drama you know if if right. last week it was the spy, spy farcical comedy, comedy yeah. now we're excuse me we're deep into the uh you know prestige drama of right. it all and for those of you who aren't familiar with the the story this is a brief synopsis <laughs> basically uh john grisham imagines what watergate would be like today with uh not a political goal in mind for re-election or, or spying on political enemies but rather a plot to secure a lucrative oil drilling deal uh, by a wealthy capitalist. Um, And so he assassinates two Supreme Court justices right after the other, ballsy. Um, And then someone, uh, a law student from Tulane uh, in New Orleans releases a a brief just saying, hey, here are some of the cases that these two justices agreed on. So if someone were killing them to try and decide a future case in the Supreme Court, Mm -hmm. here's what their motive might have been. And Mm -hmm. it's just sort of speculative, but it makes its way to the FBI. And then people start blowing up because there's a big cover up. And the cover up is worse than the crime. And there's like a deep throat character in this Darby Shaw who wrote the original brief. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's it's Watergate, but stupid. (laughs) I mean, I guess Watergate was pretty stupid, but like the idea that somebody could predict that their specific environmental case would be heard by the Supreme Court in five years and that there's a chance that a new president would appoint somebody who was pro-environment, so they need to kill them now while the president is still in charge and able to appoint them as as anti-environment judges which of course exist yeah it's i mean like not that political manipulation doesn't happen and that but you it's know it's not like this it's but it doesn't have a happen like it's this. a subtler sort of form of yeah no it's not yeah a rich guy donated four million dollars to my campaign <laughs> so now i have to kill anyone who may have been on the path to discovering his murders. Do, do you know what the, it reminded me a lot of? What? 
house of cards like it even has like really similar like uh we're the sun rising over washington as like tucci drives in to to commit these murders at the beginning of the movie um it's like very similar like music to the opening of uh of house of cards and i would not be surprised if house of cards drew a lot of inspiration from the pelican brief yeah i mean i'm sure it drew inspiration from a lot of those those thrillers and uh right you know a lot of grishamy type things um that being said there's there's none of the like hyper competence that you see in in house of cards here like no. everyone well... is incompetent including our our fave, our 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 Stan Stanley Tucci, um, uh, well, who is a somewhat incompetent confident. assassin. I don't know. He's pretty confident in the beginning, right? But then he just like gets sniped uh, unceremoniously, yeah. and he makes a lot of like really silly, unnecessary, uh, extra dead bodies around. Yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> Uh, basically you see him right in like the first scene he shows up he's got a, a, a beard a big bushy beard it's our first instance of of bear Tucci Tucci the bear <laughs> he looks good with the beard he's normally very clean shaven you know maybe a little bit of like a uh, stubble but right. he pulls the beard off very well right but then That's the next great. time we see him, and I was like confused for a second, like, is he playing multiple characters? Because he has no beard, but he has a completely fake looking, uh, you know, mop on his head, a, a, a hairpiece. Oh, I liked the hairpiece. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I, I almost didn't recognize him because at this point in his career, you know, he is really receding, you know, yeah. like, we're getting to bald Tucci that we know. Yeah, and love. I was I was surprised <clears throat> for this whole series how long it's taken to, you know, to even get this bald. I yeah. was like. I was thinking that he would shave it all much earlier, but I guess that's still the, in the future. The 90s was good for bald men, I feel like. You know, mm, men yeah. could bald gracefully in the 90s. I think we I should see. bring that back. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe not, because I do like a shaved tooch. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so he shaves his beard. And then for one of his murders of these uh, Supreme Court justices, he just sort of sneaks into the house and like, you know, silent gunshot just shoots two people. So they're not yeah. like trying to make it look like an accident or anything. <laughs> no. And then for the second one, they sneak into uh, a porno theater, a gay porn theater where the Supreme Court Justice is enjoying uh, a selection of gay porn. We have to talk about this scene because, <laughs> so Tucci strangles him with like, a thick like rope that he was using as a belt yeah. but the movie just i think to build tension you know just focuses on his hands and his lap with the popcorn <laughs> bowl at first and he slowly eats some popcorn and then he puts the popcorn <laughs> aside and then yeah. he slowly and sensuously starts undoing his belt and right, i'm like are like... we about to watch tucci jerk off like after right. committing a murder in a game no, he's com porno theater I mean, whatever, gay porno, but like, <laughs> <laughs> like, what is happening? Oh, no, he's committing another murder. Okay, okay. Um. Um, yes. So, and he's got this porno stash. He does. Which, I guess it's a fake mustache because, he, you know, it doesn't go beard and then mustache and then full shaven. It goes beard, full shaven, then mustache. Yeah. Uh, so it's a fake stash that he wears to look more like a gay, gay man in the 90s. Which I mean, fair. fair. I mean, <laughs> even today, fair. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, he, it's just, he's serving up looks for this one. It's so uh, many, like, watch the first, like, 20 minutes of this movie just for the Tucci looks. You know, it's, <laughs> it's incredible. Right. Um, and then, of course, also, he ends with the most iconic look of all because he has tapped someone's phone and they've given a description of themselves to uh, to meet with this Darby Shaw deep throat character. Who he's um, tasked with killing. Right, who he's supposed to kill her, but she's going to meet with this FBI agent that she's talked to over the phone. And the FBI agent says, all right, I'll be wearing a red hat and a button down shirt. And I weigh 
this <clears throat> many pounds it was like uh, and i'm this tall yeah it was like 180 pounds and and uh I'm this was five tall. five ten though and tucci is so not five ten he's like, five uh eight i believe let me let me double check i wrote it down <laughs> tucci is five eight uh and he describes himself as five ten i believe he could wear like lifts or stuff his shoes or something to the point where you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between five eight and five ten. I fair enough, fair enough. Could you just seem short compared to like Hollywood people because they're always tall, you know? They're tall. Um, yes. Is Julia yeah. Roberts tall? Because she looks like almost his height in this. Julia Roberts movie. is tall. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, so he's he stuffs his shirt with a pillow, and you described him as looking a little bit like Buster Bluth. Oh yeah, uh, he does. For... <laughs> <laughs> Just this kind of like pot bellied but otherwise muscular and skinny like he's guy. just like wearing glasses and a red <clears throat> baseball cap and like just completely stone faced he's just very dopey looking in this yeah. get up uh, and then he, he practices his line in the mirror to sound like <laughs> the guy's like <laughs> i weigh 180 pounds i weigh 180 pounds pound. like he's doing like a silly <laughs> impersonation of this fbi director who she's only met over the phone once right it's it's not great but you know again she's only talked to him on the phone once so it's enough to pass and she like buys it for a long time right. she's like oh shit he just got assassinated next to me and he works for the fbi nowhere right. safe. well don't don't skip over this so <laughs> you think that he's going to actually get her for a second he's yeah. he's got the gun in his pocket he's holding hands with uh, with Julia and yeah. he he pulls the gun out it's under his shirt he's going to pull the trigger and then it cuts away and you hear a gunshot but then you see him fall over and you see blood splatter on uh, Julia Roberts and so he was I guess just like blasted in the back of the head by a sniper yeah and you don't find out until the end of the movie but apparently like that killing was just unrelated to the whole scheme <laughs> It was just the CIA like trying to protect Harvey <laughs> because they were yeah. op- opposed to the president for whatever reason. And I guess like the moral of the story is like always trust the CIA because the FBI, they're a bunch of fucking feds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 so strange. It's so it bizarre. spooks over feds here. I guess. <laughs> um so yeah, I mean, Tooch is in a movie with Denzel and Julia right. Roberts. Like, yeah. like, damn, these are big names, and he's playing a right. serious role, you know. And like, again, this had this staying is... power too. Of all oh, the yeah. movies that we've seen, this is the first one where you know you could reliably say the <clears throat> title of it to you know a random bachelor by the street and be like, hey, yeah, yeah, Pelican Brief '90s, you know, and Grisham. They'd be like yeah yeah i kind of remember that you know like like this was the the girl with the dragon tattoo of the 90s you know right yeah it was humorously referenced in an episode of 30 rock which is all of my (laughs) reference uh pool so yeah the (laughs) joke is like yeah that it's a a movie that people would have heard of but not one that you would like immediately go to in terms of political thrillers (laughs) yeah yeah um it and you know like it it tries its best to make some salient points and to you know like its politics are just very confusing because its politics are honestly secondary to like the drama I don't think this movie is trying to say anything Hannah I think this is literally like well, this is one of like my favorite kinds of movies in that it's like the premise is purely like hey what if Deep Throat and Woodward and Bernstein had like a little romance going? <laughs> <laughs> what if it was like a tawdry romance while they're on the oh run? Oh my God. So like, there's no like commentary there. Cause you know, the story ultimately, once you take all that out, it's just like a more environmentally and more capitalist focused Watergate, you know? Yes, yeah. there's corruption in the White House. They can't be trusted they're spying on each other they're paranoid people die in mysterious circumstances and you need to believe victims or whatever you know like Mm -hmm. it's all the same things that go along with Watergate and oh yeah like the the reporter who's got to fight this story 
because John Lithgow is going to tell him, you better get off this story. John Lithgow is absolutely the whomst we also, at least. I, I love John Lithgow very oh much. Oh my God. Uh, I actually met him once <laughs> when I was like three because he actually does children's music concerts. And oh my uh, he God. actually knows our grandfather. <laughs> Did I know this? I don't know if you know this, but he, you know, our grandfather did a lot of theater uh, uh-huh. in, uh, in Jersey back in the day. And Lithgow worked with him in, I think, an off-Broadway type All of right. uh, thing. Anyway, met, met the guy. Lovely, lovely human being. Incredible. <laughs> as far as I know. Whomst we also. <laughs> yeah, love uh, Lord Farquaad. Love oh Third God. Rock from the Sun. Uh, just, just everything. <laughs> Harry and the Hendersons. He's fucking out of this world. He's just delightful. He's a character. He he plays, you know, the uh, the newspaper chief, of the Washington yeah. Herald. Which um, those characters I always love. I in yeah. House of Cards, that's like one of my favorite characters. Is like the mm-hmm. the guy who sends Zoe Barnes out on assignments, <laughs> and he's like a dick, but he like you know he respects the the news you know right so even though he's like jaded after all these years of having cover-ups and you know you gotta have your source you gotta you know he's like a he's like a police chief in like um like a lethal weapon type movie yeah but, for sure it's because it's the news it's more cool than <laughs> cops uh yeah that's my take on that type of i like character. it i like it um any other uh important side characters or actors that you noticed um what about cynthia nixon as uh as julia roberts friend from college oh is that who that was <laughs> yeah from uh from sex in the city or you may yeah. know her from running against andrew cuomo in the <laughs> gubernatorial <laughs> election uh recently for new york um yeah <laughs> I don't even know, man. Did not recognize her at all. I saw her name in the credits, but then I like my mind blanked on looking yep. for her. Um geez, I don't know. Yeah. Like it's 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 a it's a long movie. I don't even know if I would call it fun. Like if this <laughs> is like too long. Yeah, I think there's a lot of beats that they hit too many times. I think that comes from it being like an adaptation of a novel. You know, there's just so many beats of just like, oh, there's people chasing after them. They got to lose them in a crowd, uh, lose them in a parade in New Orleans, uh, which also happened in Undercover Blues. (laughs) Yes, there's so many. (laughs) Another similarity. Oh my gosh. It's... Um, And then, of course, the big climax takes place in a parking garage, which is another homage to, uh, to Watergate and yeah. deep throat and uh <laughs> it's a hilarious sort of ending where the they climax. planted a bomb in denzel's car and then he realized that it was a bomb and then they ran from the car uh, uh julia roberts realized it was the bomb because the car was stuttering to turn on just like Correct. it had with her uh her <laughs> other lover who was assassinated by a car bomb I, I appreciate the correction. So <laughs> rather, th- yeah, they they both run from the car, though, and then they're being chased around the parking garage by a bunch of people with guns. And then the last guy <laughs> is, like, in a car, and he's, like, driving after them and ends up crashing into the very car that they rigged to explode. Yeah. And it explodes, yeah. killing him. <laughs> it's very cartoony for, like, a movie that in general is, like, it's trying its best to be I, yeah but it doesn't take itself cartoony you know right. like it takes itself very seriously except there is like one so the music is like fine for the most part it definitely gets over dramatic <laughs> but like there is one moment where julia roberts is like going to get uh like some evidence from a security deposit uh, box in a bank yeah. and, and like just goes bleep, 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 bleep. yeah it's like someone bunk, 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 bunk died onto a piano but it's like it's it's just like awful editing i had to listen to it several times and i actually had our editor uh take a listen to it uh and he was just like oh yeah no that's just like a stock footed like a stock noise basically and it sounds like someone like clipped it 
like they were like oh. inserting it into a skirt the score um <laughs> it's just it's so bad okay it, i thought it was just part of the jarring. score it i mean it might be but it really sounds like it was edited in there okay so it's um, terrible Right. So it's the 90s. Of course, all the evidence is on a VHS tape in a lockbox yes. because these yes. are things that mattered back then. If it was made today, there'd be a flash drive. Right. Though, I mean, I also cannot believe like how easy it was for Julia Roberts to just like impersonate this woman and like the get whole movie into is this. just them impersonating people over and over I mean, again and yeah. it would have been really difficult to because remember she had to sort of say the social security number of the dead guy yeah which like it's totally reasonable like do you know but... logan's social security number also please please say it right now into the camera <laughs> <laughs> logan's social security number is uh right. no i i don't have it memorized i should right. but i but she she clearly <laughs> reads it off of something which like that's fine um okay. you know but at no point do they ask her for id <laughs> and i feel like right. that's just like standard basic stuff you know they're yeah. like okay mrs whatever the fuck your name is could i see some id never right. happens they're just like oh what's the id number where do you yeah. live what's your but phone as number? far as like artificially lengthening the plot like you know there's a part where they're trying to find this like lawyer who was a source uh you know yeah. an anonymous source for uh for denzel oh my gosh the hoops and, they uh, jump through <laughs> And they like they have to like find out which firm he works for, and they have to go to a hospital where there's a former person who clerked for him mm -hmm. to then you know tell him whether the, the person's name matches the picture. Like this is all this nonsense where they could have just been like, oh yeah, that's I know him. He's part of this law firm, <laughs> you know, from a writing perspective. I'm just saying like it's a lot of just minutia uh right. that isn't very tense or sh or stressful uh, I, yeah it's it's frustrating <laughs> but i wouldn't yeah. call it tense yeah um i i don't want to understate how much i love denzel yeah like i mean i i could see myself doing a whole standing denzel washington podcast is he is he our our other whom's we also i have to give credit to him because i i love him even when he's like just in like a dumb train movie where a train's gonna crash or <sighs> you know what where he's like a side character in like someone else's story or whether he's directing himself doing like fences or whatever like i absolutely adore denzel washington as an actor in all things that he does he's a superstar yeah for sure um, and tucci gets to bask in some of that glory so he's never so. actually on screen with Denzel, only Julia no, Roberts. Only with Julia. But like, still some glory. I, don't, I mean, yep. she's a very talented actress as well. Yep. Um, anything else to say about uh, the Pelican Brief? I don't know. Watch it with your mom. Your mom will probably like it. Right. Not like, not like your mom specifically, on, uh, David. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or at least they'll be able to like comment on uh you know how similar it is to watergate and how they remember yeah. watergate <laughs> um but, but oh did we ever explain why it's called the pelican brief it's just because the environmental law that uh, they wanted a, a court decision on involved an aviary reserve where there was an estuary endangered brown it's yeah, an, estuary. an endangered brown pelican lived there uh yeah. so it's a pelican brief it's weird that it gets this nickname doesn't make a ton of sense <laughs> it's just an I, intriguing title yeah um all right do you got you want to do a quick tucci news to wrap us up and then we'll, do, 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 tucci news Let's um do i don't it. think we actually picked one did we oh god uh i was yeah. gonna do the tank array one. Oh, okay let's do it so uh, we, we like to keep uh, abreast of all of Stanley Tucci's business ventures as well as his, you know, shows and, uh, and movies that he books. So most recently, Stanley Tucci has partnered with Tanqueray Gin um, 
sort of following on the popularity of his Negroni video and sort of capitalizing on that. So, which I think good for him as a, you know, as a good businessman uh, <laughs> to, to capitalize on a meme. He's got a lot of kids to support. Um, so let's, can we read the, uh, the press clipping from uh, Alice Brooker at thespiritsbusiness.com? Yes, thank you, Alice Brooker. The global partnership between the Devil Wears Prada star and Tanqueray Number no. 10 was revealed in a live stream from the partnership's virtual bar called Tucci and Number no. 10, open for <laughs> orders. Right. It's got to be a live stream because he's still stuck inside for COVID because it's the yeah. UK. Yep. Tucci and a team uh, of bartenders crafted a Tanqueray cocktail together before shipping the concoction to 100 fans. Can you imagine being one of the hundred fans to receive a cocktail in the mail sounds awful <laughs> i'm gonna drink I this dusty old amazon uh amazon <laughs> shot um i would do it i would get i would get uh stanley tucci mail delivery tanqueray <laughs> I'm a big fan of great tasting of a great tasting cocktail using the expertise of the amazing bartenders across the world and bringing that to life in your own living room. I can't wait to show how people can experience the finest cocktails when they take a fresh approach to their gin choice with Tanqueray number no. 10. Oh, pure shill, but I love it. <laughs> but he shills for the best. I mean, everybody <laughs> who gets gin knows that Tanqueray is actually pretty good not a gin fan so i wouldn't know no me neither but my brother <laughs> has has some gin for okay his, his drinks um mm-hmm. tucci received an impressive reaction from instagram audiences uh over lockdown after posting a number of behind the scenes cocktail making videos filmed at home uh the serves he created for fans included a rob roy old-fashioned negroni and scotch sour as well as many others so these are all like very basic drinks that like anyone should know if they're like trying to learn to mix to to mix drinks but he gotta have the negroni his claim to fame tucci's signature cocktail is a grapefruit martini which combines tanqueray number 10 pink grapefruit juice and honey so yeah i think that sounds incredible and i'm gonna have to try that Okay. It makes perfect sense, said Pedro Mendonca, managing director for Diageo's Global Reserve Portfolio. A globally iconic gin like Tanqueray Number no. 10, partnering with Hollywood's favorite aspiring bartender and martini connoisseur, bring a fresh and elevated approach to the gin cocktail experience. We're excited to launch the partnership and look forward to bringing it to life. Great. In celebration of the partnership, Tanqueray No. 10 is supporting the wider hospitality industry with a pledge to the drinks trust to help those struggling in the sector. Oh, thank you, Tanqueray number 10. <laughs> Truly the humanitarian aid we need. Uh, earlier this year, they did a partnership with Joe Jonas, right. but so this one's way better. It's all about market segmentation, guys. If you don't understand yeah. how this works, basically they say we need young people to drink gin. We need old people to drink gin. We need straight girls to drink gin and we need gay men to drink gin. <laughs> <laughs> so we get so, joe, jonas joe jonas and we get stanley tucci yes stanley tucci is for the older gay men but that's fine and the younger gay men let's be real okay fair enough he's a daddy um, so i think i think that's a great uh business opportunity for for the tooch not that he needs like a ton more money he's, he's <laughs> swimming in it yeah but he's uh fine. But listen, you know, we just we have to support him in all that he does, including playing awkward Middle Eastern stereotypes and uh, yeah. getting into shilling, shilling for uh, for particular brands of gin. It's it's the struggle of that stan life, you know. Yeah. Um, canceled one week, back the next. That's that's just <laughs> how it goes. Right. I just like that he's he's Middle Eastern, but they never say what country he's from, and they just say he's being funded by terrorist funding places yeah but also his they're like Kamel. his name is kamel C- camel it's camel his name is camel it's <laughs> his really name is, his name it's not good it's not good 
Uh, but we love you, Tooch, and and salute the fact that you are truly moving up in the movie ranks. You know, you are no longer just right. playing the Italian mobster. You're now playing other ethnicities, assassins, <laughs> right, a criminal. So, but pretty soon he's gonna be he's gonna be a hero. I just know it. Next time we're gonna be doing Mrs. Parker and the Vicious Circle, uh, which is I I have no idea what that is. I'm excited to learn about it. <laughs> um, but I know that he works with Campbell Scott, which is ah. one of his very close personal friends uh, that he grew up with. Um, so yeah, let's we'll check it out next time on Standing Stanley Tucci. Yeah, bye-bye. bye bye. Bye.